Well, hello, Darkfish Rally friends. It's the end of day one here at the Acropolis Rally. And what an entertaining day we have had out there. We've seen quite a lot of muds. We've seen some dry patches. We've felt a howling gale blowing across the stages. We have seen some wonderful driving, in particular from Thierry Neville and Sebastian Auger. We've seen one driver put his performance down to, well, you'll find that out later on. First of all, David and I had a little chat about the organizers and the job that they have done in making sure that we've enjoyed a day of great rallying. So David, we had a day one, and that was the most important thing. Big, big plaudits to the organizers for making things happen today. We just walked past Pavlos Athanasoulis coming in here. He is the guy, Him, actually not just Pavlos, Anita, everybody, all of the organizers of this rally take a bow. Yeah. They have done a remarkable job. And we've talked about this in the preview, Cole, to go from 10 days ago, two weeks ago, fretting about the, the wildfires and 90 degree heat and was the event actually going to happen because the, the local fire yeah. department didn't want the event to then absolute floods, torrential rain. They've had everything thrown at them and they've dealt with it brilliantly. You know, you cannot offer a word of criticism to the organizers. No. Let's start by talking about Jerry Newville in terms of the performances out there today. He left here on a high last year. It was a one, two, three for a high Hyundai. He just picked up where he left off. 100%. And, and right now he's on the crest of a wave, isn't he? Oh. I seem to talk about waves and crest of waves a lot. But you look at Estonia, Finland, into here, he's carried that form forward, hasn't he? And I think, okay, this morning, for me, I would have given the morning to Calais Robin Pera. Yes. Really strong yeah, morning. Uh, and then Calais struggled this afternoon, where clearly, first on the road, the road had dried out in those last two stages. Really, it's quite a strange day today. Um, because of five stages, we've only done, there's only one of those has been repeated. Yeah, and we've covered such a vast geography. Yeah. You know, and so the stages have been very different in their characteristics. This morning, as you say, we were down towards the trackie. He coped well with it, Robin Perra, but this afternoon it, it had another yeah. six hours to dry out, and that was yeah. the main factor for him, wasn't it? Hundred percent. But yeah, you know? to, to go back to Thierry, yeah, a, a very, very impressive. They did clearly took a wee bit of a gamble on the penultimate stage, taking four softs. Uh, it's worked for him, and this, you know, we just again we talked about this in the preview. You have an allocation of 12 soft tires. You're going to have to gamble with them. Yes. And the gamble is now, if this temperature continues to go up as we expect it to, by Sunday, you're probably going to be on hards. And, and he's taking the gamble today where there's a double bonus, there's a time bonus, and there's a road position bonus. Yeah. If you're going to take the gamble, yeah. take it today, get the best possible road position, and yeah. deal with it tomorrow as, as you say, and, things dry out. And, and ultimately, it is, there's the old adage, isn't there, of, you know, a bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. If you've got the time, then you're, you're, you're out front, and you know, the rest of you, come and catch me. Absolutely, because and that, in these conditions, that yeah. little bit of extra pressure, for sure, defending is easier than attacking out there. Yeah, Neuville it is. has done, listen, his lead is only, let me check, Zazie 8. Yes. His <laughs> lead is only 2.8 seconds over Sebastian Auger. Yeah. Neuville's had a great day. Better than you expected? Uh, I mean, as good as I hoped. Um, and probably expected as well. The rear diff in that final stage. What happened there? Yeah, um, the rear diff was, uh, the, the clutch was slipping. Um, it's a problem we have had in the past and I was surprised we it was appeared again. But I had it since this morning on the launches. And obviously in the last stage it just like went and uh, was really bad. Um, every first, second, third gear acceleration, I couldn't go full throttle because was too much torque for the clutch and it was spinning. So uh, yeah, I was obviously losing time and the drivability of the car is less good. But I managed to get through. I was using a lot of hand brake to, to make the car rotate and it worked. What about Ogier? Ogier is just, he is the most remarkable performer. We shouldn't, we're not surprised and we no, shouldn't be surprised. No, of course we're not because you know, you don't win eight, eight world championships by accident. He, you know, he talked a little bit this morning about the fact that he'd been away from the car he hadn't done anything, he's missed two rallies, two quick, you know, quite different rallies, Estonia and Finland. Um, but it does have an impact. You know, you have to retune your brain to the speed of these cars. Um, and not having the final opportunity at Shakedown yesterday morning to do that, it also, you, there's, a, there's a price to be paid there. But he is Sebastian Augier, and he can do it. And 
arguably in those last two stages he had a better place on the road um, but he's utilised it and he is absolutely in the thick of the fight tomorrow. Well he absolutely has had a great day out there. Let's hear from Sebastian Auger himself. The last part of that stage didn't go your way. Was that to do with the loss of the rear wing? A little bit maybe but it was very technical so I don't think the wings cost us too much. Uh, I think uh, probably you know this, this technical and, and a bit rougher section to the end uh, uh, maybe drove, uh, Cherry drove better or was a bit more aggressive in there. Um, but no, I don't know. It's, it's still a, a positive day. I'm happy with everything. Uh, we are close to the lead and uh, tomorrow is anyway uh, the, big, uh, the big part of this rally. So that's the moment where we'll have to be at our best. Dirtfish Live Center. 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 Well, a really great battle at the front between Thierry Neuville and Sebastian Auger. We then drop down a little bit, David, but there is a battle for third place. It is right now Cali Rovera holding that position. We've already mentioned his performance today, but let's just reiterate just how good a performance it has been. Normally, first on the road here, you could expect to ship a minute, a minute easily, maybe more. He's managed things nicely. He's not got carried away. He's not got frustrated. Uh, he's done a good job. Are you sure it's an incredibly mature drive? And I think that's if speed marked his morning, then the maturity marked the afternoon. That he knew as soon as he was in there, he knew that he wasn't going to be able to, to, to take the time. That's why so you're the best. That, that's a great. That's a great way of putting it. You know, the morning was about speed. The afternoon was about a young man showing. Yeah, he's young in age, not in experience and Exactly maturity. that, exactly that. And this, again, it's something that we've seen another kind of evolution of him, isn't it? From, you know, last year he was very much in a championship mode and, and very much driving quite defensively. I don't think he will here. I think tomorrow he will absolutely... What's the gap, Cole? <laughs> what is that? 25.5. Uh, is that... So the I, gap's 22.7. He's 25.5 yeah, off the lead. lead. That, for me, that's... You know, he could still do that. He absolutely could. See what odds you can get on Cali Rovenpera. They'll be reasonably generous. I would take them. Here's what Rovenpera thinks his chances are. Are you still looking at potentially pushing for a win? Ah, uh, yeah, of course. So early, early on the rally, we have to push what we can um, tomorrow. We start with a different starting place, so it's, I have no idea what the pace is going to be when, when we are not opening the road so much. What do you expect, though, in terms of conditions tomorrow? Maybe similar to this afternoon or, or more mud? What are we expecting? Um, I think tomorrow's stage is where the most wet on the recce. Um, also, they are more in the forest in, in the mountains, so I think it's not drying up so much than today, but for sure, like we saw today, it's drying up really quickly. If there is wind and, and sun, um, it's, it's going to be quite dry. Welcome to Dirtfish, where we'll teach you how to do this and this. And all you have to do is click this link. We'll see you soon. So that is our one, two, three at the end of day one. Uh, other notable performances, David? Uh, I think in fairness, El the other Toyota, Elvin Evans, has driven well. There's been highlights today, the last stage this evening. Um, he had his own specific requirement for finding some more speed from, from that stage. Um, and Taka, Takamoto Katsuita coming here, you know, the, many of the drivers complained about not having a shakedown. Taka didn't have a test. Um, and he, you again, you talked at the top of this one about Thierry leaving here on a high. Taka left here on an absolute low. He did. You know, he, he put did. it off on the power stage. He was nowhere yeah. before that. Uh, and to come back to an event, not having turned a wheel um, in Greece in a test or anything. I think he's done a pretty good job. I'd agree with you on that. Uh, we did catch up with Elvin Edmonds, and here, here's what he puts his pace in the final stage down to. The car's been fine, let's say. Uh, probably been a bit too wary of what I'm going to find, trying to look after the car probably a bit too much. Um, so, yeah, probably uh, turned it up a little bit there in that last one and uh, at least then it was a bit better and we managed to, to take back a few positions at least. So you, you, you say you turned it up a little bit in the last one, so you, you went for it a little bit more, you saw that maybe as your opportunity in the day? 
Well, yeah, uh, obviously it wasn't going so well the way it was. So, uh, yeah, otherwise it was, we were going to risk falling really far behind. So uh, we had to try and do something. What, what does a turning up Alvin Evans look like in the last stage? Describe, what do you do? I mean, obviously you break later, but a bit more about that. <laughs> Grow a pair of balls. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess, David, if we are talking as we are at this point in our daily review, notable performances, it's Michael Lappy. You know, we were there, yeah. weren't we, at the end of stage four when he yeah. had that issue. He never seemed too not concerned. Fe- I'm not really feeling it with EP today. You know, we talked to him again this evening and the car's not really suiting him. He's not, he's not getting what he wants from the car. He's not getting the feedback. OK, he's still here. Um, he's he in the fight issues. for third, David. He's in the fight so, for so third. So the, the encouraging yeah. thing is that he's not 100% happy and we know we know he can find a sweet spot in that car. We, he's, yeah, he, he, the, and I think that's the point. He's raised our expectations yeah, so high. That, okay, that is correct. Get rid of Finland, you know, that was a mistake. But before that, just podium, podium, podium. Yeah, yeah. And, and I genuinely came here thinking, you know, we'd seen him on rough rallies. He's, he's a driver that can drive in anywhere. He's yeah. led Turkey in the Citroen. I genuinely thought we'd come here and with the road position, if it had been dry, I'd put him down as a leader tonight. If we're talking about bets, I'm going to have a five euro bet with you. Five euros that Lappy finishes on the podium. Take it or leave it, it's up to you. I'll leave it. <laughs> Does that mean you agree that he's going to finish on the podium? As five euros not enough for David Evans? No, I don't. No, I, I, <laughs> Are I you think, not a betting man? I, I, no, I'm, I'm not a betting man, but I, I think anybody can still end up on the podium. Yeah. There is so much to come through this weekend. There's just so. The weather, I think, still can play a part and all sorts of madness can, can still happen. Do you think it's going to rain? Oh, God, it's always going to rain. I'm the eternal optimist when it comes around. I do love a bit of rain. <laughs> it really does. Do. Uh, folks, it has been a really fascinating day here. We will once again congratulate the organisers because I was very sceptical as to whether they could run really anything here and they've done a wonderful job as we've seen out in the stages today. Folks, if you've missed anything today, there's one place to go. David, where is that? Obviously, Dirtfish Life Centre. Everybody knows that now. Dirtfish Life Centre is the only place where, to where's, be. Where's the button? It's up here, isn't it? Or is it over there? <laughs> no, it's up here. It's, it's, it's up, up there. there. Dirtfish Life Centre. And you can recap the day that we've enjoyed here in Greece. Plenty more to come tomorrow. Today was challenging. 65 kilometres. Tomorrow, six stages, 140 plus kilometres tomorrow. That is a monster day. Anything, as David Evans has said, could happen out there. Stick with us at dirtbush.com to find out just what does unfold on day two of the Acropolis Rally.